Okay, guys, I really fought with the idea of not even showing you this because this 34 element sprag, Borg Warner 34 element sprag, this thing is so tight that you literally have to uh, put it in the ring first, then sit here and mess with it. Now notice I've got my race down here. I've got my other race on the bearing. Now remember, it has to turn clockwise when you're putting this on. And normally a, a 16, 8 or 16 roller, it just falls on here. This thing, you have to literally work it down on this uh, register to get it where you want it. As long as you can turn it clockwise, you're good. That's how you install that. And I went ahead and lubed it with some transmission fluid, so it's good to go. Then you just have a plate. The upgrade is to go to a spiral lock instead of the regular snap ring to, to secure this thing to keep it from flying off at high RPMs. I have never personally put on a spiral lock, so we're gonna learn together. Hopefully it's not too big of a deal. I would assume I've got to hook this part. Let's look at this thing a little more. I'm assuming we gotta get this thing started in the, there we go. Then you just come around, just keep feeding it. Now the reason why this is considered an upgrade is because apparently the regular snap rings at higher, they're calling it high RPM operation. Now how much RPM that actually entails, I have no idea. But they're saying that the, ooh, I bet that's gonna be fun to get off because you're gonna have to dig that dig that out of there and then just kind of reverse the process but i guess they're saying a stock i don't even see, oh here it is the stock snap ring that you normally would use can for through centrifugal force come off and fail so they have you put on this spiral snap or spiral retainer i'm gonna push that up into this make sure we got it There you go, 34 element sprag installed. There's no internal seal. We've deleted that or removed it. All right guys, I'm gonna go through installing your apply piston. This is the direct drum, which is gonna be, you know, the process is identical, installing your apply piston in the, uh, for, in the forward or the direct. Um, on my modified transmission, I'm not running this internal lip seal. Just remember, if you're going to put it back with all three of your lip seals, the lip seal inside the drum, the lip faces up towards you. I know that might, <clears throat> might seem counterintuitive to you, but on the applied piston, these seals go down towards the pressure and when I, you know when you look at your lip seal it's going to be facing down towards the pressure but then when you do the one inside your drum it will go up so when you go to put this together here's what you got to do <clears throat> and i'm going to go through the process as if i had that third lip seal inside of this assembly but this is how you do it you come in and the first thing you want to clear is your middle small seal so you're just going to carefully wiggle it and get it get it to see how i'm kind of rocking it and turning it rocking it and turning it and here in a second it'll you'll feel it kind of go down a little bit so you'll get this, this middle seal is the first thing we're trying to clear because keep in mind the lip is going down so you don't want it to get hung up on your retaining ring uh, receiver groove or anything like that and get damaged. So far I have been very lucky 
and I haven't really had to use a lip seal or I'm sorry an installer tool of any kind on this middle seal of course because I've had these things apart several times right here there's some there's a receiver groove for your snap ring and there's an oil groove into this this shaft and for some reason let me put a little let me put a little slippery puts a little bit more slippery on there and you'll find this this goo doesn't want to work once you have transmission fluid on here i'm going to lube that up just a hair see if we can get this thing to play fair here Edit some of this out of there, I guess. So get that center seal to clear first. Rock it, rock. Okay, there it goes. See, now watch. You're up, you're up. You're going to rock it, rock it. And then once you get past this upper portion, there it goes. Okay, now you spin it. You spin it and make sure that this seal is not folded torn or damaged in any way okay i pulled it a little too far so let's work it down work it down okay now we're down i'm just going to spin it there's no no issues so what's happening now is your inner seal is entering your top hat of your applied piston that has a big uh, bevel to it that allows it to take that sealing uh, lip seal that's coming up towards you and funnels it into the bottom side of this top hat so once you can kind of work it down wiggling and turning wiggle 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 and then you'll get down to where your outside lip seal is where you have to start doing it take your I, I am a big fan of this lip wizard you basically take it and very carefully install it between your ply piston and your drum and when I mean I want it all the way into the bottom of the drum that way you are past you're going all the way past your lip seal to the bottom of the drum kind of wiggle it towards your your uh, lip wizard walk it around about a quarter of the way wiggle it towards the lip wizard come around another quarter wiggle it towards the lip wizard and the only thing you have to be careful of is your lip wizard tries to grab these lugs when you're coming around so just keep the front edge where it's clearing those uh, these lugs and keep that tool on the bottom of your drum and just move it around about a quarter of a turn at a time slowly getting that lip seal to fall down in that uh, sorry that drum or that sealing surface you know don't get crazy with it just be patient and you'll feel it as you're working it it'll start dropping down and once it goes in all the way you'll know because it'll literally clunk down to the bottom it'll go all the way to the bottom and then you will just really easily spin it to make sure that you have no uh, issues with your with your lip seal and make sure your lip wizard stays all the way on the bottom of your your drum just keep working it keep working hey guys once you get it to a, where it engages its sealing surface it'll pop it'll go all the way down and one way to test it to make sure you haven't damaged or rolled or otherwise compromised your lip seal is just take it and spin it. It should spin fairly easily and free with no binding, no issues. So I can push down on it. Everything is revealed. The apply piston is successfully installed with no damage. So then we'll move on to putting in our release springs. All right, guys, we're going to put all 16 of our springs in, same as we did on our forward drum, because this is a performance build. 
we want that release when you it's it has to do with your uh, speed or shifting efficiency you know there's all kinds of different reasons why like if you had a trans brake they use an even stronger spring than the factory springs and sometimes the factory sent these out with only 14 of these so just running 16 factory springs that alone is, an, is a, a good high performance build. Then you have your retaining plate. And we will go back over to the compressor slash drill press. Compress that down and get our, our retaining ring on. Just one little quick tip. Once you get your retaining ring in behind your release piston, take a screwdriver. A lot of people call this staking and push I guarantee you'll be surprised when you get done and you'll think that snap rings all the way in its groove take a large screwdriver and put it between this retainer and your snap ring and just turn you'll be shocked because it almost always will go farther up into that groove 